Hi guys, welcome back. And anyone that's new, welcome to the channel. And I know you'll be joining me, Barry. Thank yeah. you, I've got your message today. You're happy for me to waffle. So if you're the only person that's watching, I'm waffling for you. <laughs> okay. Um, right, this is a quick one. Uh, because as you probably know, if you watched my last one, and the one before, I did talk about Peter and he's testing the tool for me. And uh, what happened is exactly really what I wanted to happen. Um, he's a new turner, so he knows nothing about the, the presentation of like presenting the tools and things like that. He's only done a little bit. And I deliberately didn't give him any real sort of tips on, on using that chisel. Um, and he done me a little video. Um, and he was doing he was doing well, but he was struggling a little bit with um, getting the cutter to cut properly and getting vibration. Um, and he was using it on spindle. Now, firstly, the a AU cutters is which is what what you get on, on there, uh, cut cutters. You you got to present them differently. They're not really for spindle work. They're really for for bowls. So you don't have to zoom in on that. Okay. They're really for bowls. Um, but they will work on spindle, they work on the outside of a bowl, they do everything. Me, personally, I just keep them for hollowing, that's it. That's all I use them for. Outside of bowls, spindle work, standard cutters. They're fantastic, they work brilliant. Um, so right now, first off, let's get us fit. AU cutters, what is an AU cutter? The AU is the name I give for my cutters. They're cupped cutters. Um, it's like anything, why does anyone give a name to what they've got? It's how I how I describe it. It's like my ultimate hollower, my standard type three chisel set, shear cut hollower. Um, I used to call it just a shear cut hollower, then I changed the name to SCH. So, cause I do now a one, two, three, and a four. Um, as people might have noticed, I call my record power chuck an SCH four. It's an <laughs> SC chuck, but I call mine Harry. So I call him SCH cause it's, I just come out with SCH. I don't know, it's just so many chisels and things now. Anyway. Right, so all these have the cut cutters. This this one is gonna be the ultimate hollower and it comes with the, you've got the six mil and the eight mil cutters are gonna come with it. And they're cut cutters. I call them AU, as I said, that's just how I describe. If you look them online, you won't ever find them. That's just, well, you will, they come to my website. It's just my name, okay? Um, AU originally I called it that because these cutters were never intended for wood. They um, they are now they make them for wood, uh, wood turning. But original the original cutters were designed for aluminium. So I just take the A and the U and I call them AU. That's that's it. Um, right now, getting back to what I was saying, because of the way these these cutters are and the way you, you the bevel, you you've got to present them differently. And I've never really gone through that. I've I've, I've said about rolling them over and get working off the tip. But when you use um, when you use standard cutters, which Lisa's going to sort of bring you bring you over now, so you can see I've just got a spindle on here. Okay, so when you use the, the standard cutters, this just happens to be the the chisels. These are the ones I use for cutting the aluminium, so not to not to rub it in for anyone. But yeah, they're still going strong. Still same cutters. Right, when you come in with these, you your handle is back, and you you come in on the bevel. And you can come along, okay? But when you do the AU cutter, it's totally the opposite way, okay? Because if I'm going that way, I don't want the bevel that, I have to start the cut this way. Handle in front of the cutter. So a standard cutter, the handle is behind the cutter. On an AU cutter, the handle goes in front to start the cut. Now, that might look like you're not gonna be on the bevel, but as soon as you start and you roll, when you get to, to this position, you are on the bevel because you're working, although you're working on tip, you're sort of tip and just below tip there. And as soon as you, as soon as you start to cut and you roll it, that's it, you're on the bevel. But if you start here, which you'll see in a minute, you can't pick up the cut, okay? So I'm gonna I'm start the lathe. Just to get it going, I've just got this piece on here. Now, as I said, the standard cutters come in, you pick up the cut, and as you can see, it very, it very quickly and easily pick up a cut, okay? Like that. A few little ripples there, that's just me. Not enough coffee today. Right, 
But with these ones, if you come here and you try to do that, you can't pick up the cup. And when you try pushing, what well, you'll get... There. Hear that? Now that's what Peter was getting yesterday. And he couldn't work out why he was getting a little bit, what's he doing wrong? But see, with these ones, if you come in this way, start the cut, roll it, and then you come along. And then you've got your cut. And there you go. And that finish is like that. Well, you'll see that in a minute when I stop the lathe. If you're going the other way, same thing. Come in, start the cut, turn the tool. Bring it up, there's the, I'll just have to get in straight away. Right, so if I change hands and I come in, I'll start this way. And here I come. Now, I'm just gonna clear this one right off. My slow cut. Right, nice slow slow cut there. Coming again, and as you can see, this is still the same cut of it. Cutting aluminium, it's now cutting wood. Again, let me come along here. We'll clean this up. Nice and slow, there's no rush. Take your time, keep it nice and smooth. But what I want to show you, what I want to show you, one, I'm going to show off now and show you the finish on there. The finish we get. Okay, you can see that finish, like it's sawdust, it's sawdust over it. That's all that is. All right, look at that finish. Beautiful. Right, now, as I said, you'd think you'd come in this way because this is the way your bevel is, but you don't. You come in here and you turn. Now, when you turn, it's hard for whether you can see it. As soon as I've turned, now I'm at that position, my bevel is completely touching. So I'm riding that bevel along. When I go this way, I'm on the bevel, but I can't get a proper cut because the cutter's too straight. So you're not gonna get that proper cut. So it's, it's coming this way here. So pick up your cut, start this way, get the cut, bring it round. As soon as you've, you've rolled it to this sort of 45 position, that's it, I'm, I'm on the bevel because it, it's, it's not straight cut, as I said before, if you look at that, now you look at that that bevel on that cutter, you've literally only got about, maybe a, it's probably just a bit under 10 degrees actually, there, it's not far off being straight. So there's none, none of this, you can't come in and rub it this way. You come in, pick up the cut, roll it to there, and then you come along and you'll be cutting all the way and you'll work off that tip, okay? Now I'm going to start up again, and it's the same. I'm just going to push that in only a tiny bit, I'm not far out. But... So if you want to do on the ends, the same. Bring it round. Then I can roll it. Just roll it over, and you get this lovely smooth finish, see? Now... Now, I'm not going to be turning beads and coves and things like that. You can do if you want. Um, everyone goes out and does beads and coves. I don't know why. It's not something I do a lot of. Just go out and just have a play. I mean, I don't know. Just maybe turn something for the wife. Just start moving some wood off and see what sort of shapes you come up with. <laughs> Might be something she can sit and play with. <laughs> Who knows? But, <laughs> but as you can see, each time I come in, I have to start with the cut around at the front, like this. Handle in front of the cutter, not behind. So again, if I was coming in with a standard one, I wouldn't want to be coming in with it this way, okay? Because then I'll just be on this, this edge here. Wouldn't be nice. You come in, you get on the bevel of this one, and you ride the bevel that way. Okay, because where we have only, say, uh, uh, probably a, I don't know what it is, I've never measured it. It's, it's probably a, a between, the, between five and 10. This one has a 30 degree bevel. 
So that's why this one, we can come in here and we can start this way. Like so. Now, what well, you gotta be careful when you're coming in with these ones as well. If you come in this way, you're in danger of this happening. You're in danger of this getting skip backs when you come in here. Now skip backs are nothing really, they're not they're not bad. They they just spoil your piece, that's all they do. But they, they can take you by surprise and you'll come in here and you'll just ruin your piece and that's what you'll get. But as soon as you come in this way, no skip back. No skip back. Okay. And if I'm gonna demonstrate in a minute on a little small bowl blank, but if you're following. Let me get this move off a bit. Get this back in. You just want to get get some sort of wood moving a little bit. So I'm trying to get this done. I'm gonna just no, I want to get this down a little bit. So I'm gonna show you something else, okay? Right, just bear with me. And as you can see there, I am actually going uphill as well, which is the, well, what people would say, the cardinal rule, you mustn't go uphill, can't cut uphill. So let's come down with it. Right, but if you're gonna go uphill with the, this one, right, start the cut, come along, come along, come along. I'm gonna start going uphill, so that would give me a bad cut. So what I do is I right, lower the hand, drop the handle, drop the handle down and come up. That way I keep this smooth finish. And I'll show you actually the smoothness of the finish there. You can see how smooth that is going up. The reason that is because as I've come along, as I start to go uphill, I drop the handle down, coming up with the cutter. So what, what I'm actually doing now is I'm slicing down here. I'm not lifting any of the fibers because I'm just slicing them as I'm coming up. And as long as I'm nice and gentle, I can come uphill and I can get as good a finish going uphill. So come along, pick up the cut, here we go. Coming into here, so I bring it up. Bring it up. And that way, I'm slicing as I'm going up. It's not the perfect cut. It's always going to be better to go downhill. I'm not changing the rules of everything. It's better to go downhill. Okay. You'll always get that, that smoother finish like that. Especially if it is something you're going to give to the wife to play with. You, you don't want her getting splinters. Because she will moan it, moan it you. What are you laughing for? <laughs> you know, these are like for stress relief, these things. I play with my one, takes all my stress away. Right, so anyway, guys, like I say, if you're going to make something, make something useful. Right. That's how you would use the AU cutters on, on spindle work, okay? And look, this is the finish you should be getting, okay? You should be getting this sort of finish, okay? This is what you're getting on your wood. That's as good as any skew, skew you'll get. Right, now, because I know Peter's doing a, a bowl at this moment, and he's a little bit worried about it. I think he's, he's overthinking things because he doesn't want to mess it up. But he won't. But it's something you don't think of for new turners. It, 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 you know, they... And I didn't really think about... I've, I've shown how to do these with the bowls, but I haven't really um, explained about the difference on the on the cutters. And, and the main thing is the skip back, because when you get skip backs, that's what tends to frighten people, put a lot of people off. And like I've said before, it, it, it's 90% the reason why you get catch. People think you come down and you catch the wing of your your chisel and, and that's all it is a lot of times because you you'll come down 
your come off your bevel, your point goes, and you get a little skip back, and it happens so quick, and then your wing catches. You don't even realise what it is, but if you slowed your video right down, you'd actually be able to look and see exactly what it is that you got your catch. Right, now, Peter, I know you're having a bit of what's about your wood. I did drill a hole in for you, because I gave you a bit of wood to go with that chisel. Um, for me, this is all... This is what I do. People, other people, you, you do. I don't. I don't do anything for showing people how to mount wood. I just say what I've I've done, and I normally just drill a fifty mil hole with my Fosner bit, um, and I, I don't dovetail it because all that's for is for me to mount on, holds it secure, and then I put my dovetail in the bottom, which that one I turn. I have a little dovetail tool that I can put in, and I get my dovetail. Okay, one I made up. If you haven't got one of those then for you new turners, you can always uh, use your skew. A lot of people, that's all they use that for because they buy it, they have a go, think, oh, that's, I'm not using that. And then they keep it for doing this. Nothing wrong with that. So, but put it in so that your blade is flat. And when you come in there, that will give you your dovetail here. Just makes that a little bit more secure. But as I say, you, you find your own, your own way of uh, mounting your woods and things like that. So well, I'm just gonna pop that on there. I, I just find this a secure way, and if it does fall off, then that's my fault, because I choose to do it that way. Okay, no one else to blame, just me. And I, I've come to a way where I make sure my wood's secure, because I do like to turn a little bit fast. I don't, I don't think I'm dangerous, really. I just turn fast, yeah. I mean, as long as your wood's mounted, all right? It wouldn't matter if your lathe was shaking all over the place. As long as your wood's mounted, okay? As long as that doesn't come off there, it don't matter. The lathe ain't going to fall over. It ain't going to go nowhere. Might rattle and shake a bit. Sometimes I'll go faster, see if I go through the, the rattle. Um, sometimes I slow it down if I, if I have to. But uh, for me personally, my personal thing is I like a little bit of speed when I'm turning. I mean, this is going to... I've got this set hardly of a really bothered about the speed this, this would be turning at about two and a half thousand rpm for this little bowl it's just a little bowl so right okay so i'm going to spin that up get that turning right okay so now with the au now the thing is you've got here when you come in you've always got a little bit of danger if i can get it to do it no it's not going to do it there see that when you're coming in and you're trying to start, you've got that danger of, uh, come on, come on. No, I've got rigid there, look. See this? If you come in too far like that, you're gonna get these skip backs. So, the first thing I'd like to do, if you're gonna do a push cut, you're gonna do the pull cut, same thing, handle in front of the cutter. Come in, pick the cut up. Okay, as soon as it starts, roll the chisel. I am now, that's my bevel. My bevel's actually rubbing there and I can just bring my chisel towards me. Now, the best way is to come back, stop there, that's it. Now, for all my cuts, I've got a little ridge there. That's gonna stop any skipping back. So again, you would come in, pick up the cut, just take the chisel handle away from you. Don't pull, don't do this, don't pull, right? Because all you're gonna do there, if you pull it, spit that out, if you pull it, all you're going to do is scrape. That's just scraping, okay? Excuse me, guys. I'm going to put my face shield on because I'm getting a mouthful of dust. Right, okay. You can still hear me. Some people might say no, and that's better. <laughs> right. If I go in here... And, hang on. Talk this a little bit high. Go down a little bit, fraction down. Right, if I come in here and then I pull this towards me, it's going to move a nice bit of wood, yes. And that's fine, if that's what you want to do. But, all that's doing is scraping, okay? I'm, I'm basically on the bottom of the cut, so I'm scraping. As you get a little bit further with your tool rest, you're going to start, this is going to happen, okay? You're going to start getting this, because you're on here, and it's just, it's gonna start grabbing. When you start the cut, pick it up. You can go through a hole with these cut as well. Right, pick up the cut, push the handle away. Don't pull the tool towards you, push the handle away from you. 
now you're getting a cut. Well, you want to come back here a bit, but that's not your normal. What you, I mean, you can you can push a handle and then you can sort of, you can draw it towards you and pushing the handle and pulling it around. And down. See there, I'm doing a bit of both. So I'm going to put a dust extractor on because that's kicking up a little bit of dust there. Right, now just take that away. Sorry for all the noise. Right now, your ridge here, that stop any skip back. So I can now come in and that's going to stop any kick back. So again, come in here, turn it. Now, I'm going to pull the handle towards me. And go. Don't be tempted to go that way. If I start doing that, again, all I'm doing is scraping. All I'm doing there is scraping it. Okay, because so I'm using this bottom part of the cutter. Don't go in and push the chisel. You must bring the handle towards you. So we come in, we start a cut. We bring it towards me. This is coming towards me. And I'm slowly going round with it. And so I can fall around to the bottom of the bowl. Okay. Don't stop for me because I'm dusting Lisa out. <laughs> and she hasn't got a dust mask because she's not quite a star yet. No. She's not a star yet, so she doesn't get a dust mask. <laughs> I'm the star. Right, so, as you can see, so as we come in, if I start my cut and I... Your natural thing is going to be you think you're going to push forward. You're going to be scraping it. You're not going to be cutting it. You, you've you got to do both. You've got to slowly push forward and come back with the handle. Bring it, same as you'll do with your bowl gouges. It's just your bowl gouge can start a little bit different because you, you've got a different angle. You've got a different bevel, see? So your bowl gouge, um, you, you're not going to... That one's too big. Too big. Let me get uh, this one right. Your bowl gouge has got a different angle. So I'm here, I'm starting here. So I haven't got the same, and I will push down, follow the bevel, and I will do the same. I will run it round. Okay. Um, so that's the same thing. See, I'm doing no different to your bowl gouge. That's why I say, if you can learn to use that, if you're using a carbide, you'll use this. The one big difference you've got with that, and it's not to say this is better, like I always say, use both. And if Make, make half a dozen cuts with that. Make half a dozen cuts with that. Then make half a dozen cuts with that. Slowly you'll get so competent, you'll be able to use both of them. But the difference with here is when I come down, and a lot of time, like I said, to skip back, a lot of time people will be surprised. You come off of that bevel, you go like that, and you it'll give that tiniest, tiniest little skip back, but that's enough for that top wing to catch. But if you come down here, the... the where you have got risk is this top wing, which is what catches a lot of people out because you come down and, and if, if you keep your tool over this way, which is more often not what happens, when you come, this ain't deep enough for me to really show you, but when you come down to the bottom, it's what they don't do is they don't roll. You, you've got to, see, it's not just a fall around. There's a bit of wrist action. You've got to be able to, to, to roll your chisel as well because when you get to the bottom, you want to roll it a little bit. So you stay cutting here and you follow it round. A lot of new turners will, you'll get it, you'll pick the cone, you'll think, oh, this is lovely, and you'll go down. You'll get to the bottom of the bowl where you're gonna come round, and that bottom wing catches. That catches on the bottom here, and that's what'll throw you over. So then you start to get a bit cautious. Then you think, oh, well, I'll do a pull cut. And you'll come here and you'll pull cut, and that's fine. But when you come here, that wing hits that side, and that's when you get the catch that really grabs you, really bangs it. That's the one that break your bowl, throw your bowl off. It's a lot of the time it's because that wing's caught. So that's the bits you gotta worry about on, on your bowl gouges. Uh, it's it's the wings. The wings are what cause you the problem, not the tip. Now that's where the beauty with with this, because when I come down here, there's no chance because it's round, completely round, and it's not rolled over. So when you come down with these cutters, you'll come down. There's no chance of this wing catching. There's no chance of that wing catching. I can just follow that all the way through. 
The only thing you've got to watch with these is don't go too flat because once you go like that, then you've got your wing. That, that's basically the same as your wing catching. It's going to take too much wood. You, if you had that secured in a jig, yeah, you could push it in and, get in and cut it, but you'll never hold it. Okay, it, it will just take the chisel from you. Uh, and that, but, but this, for practicing with your bike, it gets you used to it. I mean, another, it's, it's not the ideal thing, but it can help if you're having trouble and you're having trouble with your wings and getting used to it. If you don't do shear cutting, if you don't use it to come across the bottom or across the ear, you don't want to shear cut, flatten the wings. Just take the edge off your wings here, okay? Leave your tip, because it's your tip that's doing all your cutting, down there and down there. Your wings, if you don't do any scraping and you don't do any shear cutting, your wings ain't gonna be a problem for you because you don't need them. Just flatten those on your grinder there, those little bits, and then when you come down here, if you happen to have that too far over, it won't do nothing because it won't cut, it just rub. It won't grab you. It can just help you to build your confidence up. And then you can slowly bring your back wings back in. Because you want them, because like I said, shear cutting. To shear cut, if you're gonna come across, I've already taken the front off of that now. No, what donut? I'm not gonna flatten that off because this is actually gonna be a bowl, so. If you're gonna do a, sh a shear cut, you, you, you can't shear cut on the front of a bowl if it's over your lathe bed, okay? If you pull, pull your headstock out, you can, all you can do is a pull cut, okay? You can't ride your bevel, you can't get on your bevel because that would be so dangerous. You, you cut, that's gonna be up. That's gonna be up there like that and that, that's, so, that's so dangerous, okay? You can only use the edge. The only way you can shear cut that is for your, when you come across, your handle has to be down here. You can't do it because you've got your lathe bed and everything gets in the way. If you've got a big enough lathe, you might be lucky to get away with it. But to shear cut, if you, um, can't really bring it around. To shear cut, you've got to be on this bevel, okay? That's got to be coming like this. That's got to be on that bevel and you've got to come along and you've got to cut. That, that's got to be up so it, it slices. It's, it, like I say to you all the time, the difference between a cut and a scrape is literally a hair, a hair thickness. You know, the minute that, that comes over, you're not got all that, bev that, you're not got that bevel touching. The minute that comes over, that starts to scrape. That, that is scraping, okay? This is cutting. It's, it's like I say, a knife. You, you, can't, you can't cut if, if you, as soon as you tip it up, it just wants to dig in. So to get a, a, an actual shear cut, you have to have this angle so that the, the wood is slicing. That is slicing up. See, I can, look, I can slice that, okay? I can slice that wood up there. Let me lock that headstock. Even though the names of the tools now look headstock. Yeah. Right, I can, I can slice that, okay? So I can cut wood off with that. But if I come here, Look, see what I mean? It just wants to dive in. Look, if I pull it that way, it wants to dive in. So the only way I can stop that happening is to roll it over a little bit, and then that's scraping. Now, now look, I'm just gonna scrape. I can't even pull it up, okay? I'm scraping. The only way you can cut is if it's at that angle. Now, it's cutting. But you can see where my chisel has to be. My handle has to be down here. Degree wise, of, I don't know, I don't have a clue. I just know that it has to come down here and it has to just be, to, um, be on the top of my five for this sort of tool. Then I could come here and I could come across the front of the bowl, but, but there's no point, what's the point? You're normally hollowing it out. So you don't have to clean it up. So scrapes right, but, but sheer cut is, you've got to have the handle right down and come along. I like it for shaping the outside of bowls. I do it for when I've got, uh, if I've got something that's particularly lumpy or out of balance, because like I say, it, the tool can just only come down. I don't get beat. If I'm here, you, it's bouncing away like this. It's boom, boom, boom. Or, that. or if you get a push cut to go around, but you must start round here. And again, you, you follow round. If you come here and you pull round, you're just doing a pull cut. You're not actually cutting, you're scraping. Okay, if you, if you start your bowl here and you come round, if you actually stop, 
so you're doing your pull cup stop leave everything how it is and now look at it look around and you'll see that for this cut to work for you you've got a gap underneath it might not notice it here but there's a gap between your the heel of that bevel this bit and the wood that means you're not on the bevel because if you actually try coming around here you're in a great danger if you're at this level of getting a catch because your wings up and your wings going to get your catch you can only do it if you drop the handle down then it can't catch it it slices it takes a lot of that aggression away when you get in a bit of bumping just try it don't have to take my word for it like i said i'm no expert but i'm an expert at what i do you know i i it works for me because of the way i do it i find it works it might work for you might not you might not get on with that way of turning you think well that didn't help i've got a catch don't do it then simple as that but for me i can come across here and i can just slice now if i can do that by hand and make it that easy i think well, that's going to be so easy when that's actually turning but if i'm i'm down here and i'm coming across i can't add my wing up i'll get one almighty catch that dig in so i've got to take it slightly off the minute i take it off then that's not cut, cut a blade can't cut the minute it's off it looks good and you'll get lovely shavings but then if I get my square card by chisel and I just push it in, I'll get lovely ribbons coming back on that. But if you actually look at them, they have little crushes on them. A little bit like a... Concertina. No. A music box. What are they called? A cordon. A cordon, yeah. Little, there'd be little, little folds in it like that. And that's because it's got a slight scrape. If you get nice actual cuts like that, it'd be nice clean and straight. Straight ribbons. But that's just my thoughts. Yeah, there you go. Like I say, I'm no expert. I've, what I have... I'm not an expert, I'm experienced, because I've turned a long time. I've had 35 years of catches. I've had catches, and I know what they're like, and I know how to avoid them. I've learned how to avoid them, um, and make it make the, the turning comfortable. Um, I get lots of people ask me if I do lessons and things. I know I don't do lessons, because uh, I, do, I don't do demonstrations. Personally, for me, I don't think I'm good enough to do them. I, I know what I know. I don't teach people. I don't have the right to say this is how you should do it. I only show people. The only reason I'm doing videos is because I get so, so many questions. People saying about the cutters, you know, they've got them, they can't use, or they, you know, they're not getting a good fish. People come back and say, "Oh, but got my chisels, fantastic. Been out using them. Oh, they're brilliant. Love them. Yeah, they're great. Uh, I just oh, I find I'm getting a little bit of a rough finish, and I sort of like roll your cutter, but try and explain it. It's a bit awkward. So I say, all right, well. I thought I'd put some videos up and show people and what you can actually do. There's a lot you can do with carbide. It really is a lot. Anyway, I'm waffling now, aren't I? So that's that. I just wanted to go over what the AU cutters, the way you use them. Totally different. Okay. Chisel over there. Start your cut. Come in. If you can't and you've got, say, a wall or something over there, you, know, you, you can't get your chisel over there. Your handle don't go. That's fine. Not a problem. You come this way. Pull cut. There is nothing wrong with hollowing a bowl on pull cut, because with these, you're not pull cutting. So it is another advantage. I'm gonna blow the trumpet of carbide here, and carbide do score another point, because for me to come here and hollow this ball completely pulling this way, one, I can't ride my bevel, okay? I can't, I, I can do this bit a little bit here, but I can't come, there's no possible way I can come, come round there. I'd have to be coming up and down and doing all silly things <laughs> like that. Once the bowl gets deeper, I can't get in there. So I can I can scrape it, and that's what I will be doing. I'll be scraping, I'll be pull cutting, pull cutting, pull cutting. When I come to this side, I've got to be very careful because I've got this wing, so I'll be rolling it right over, and that will be really scraping. And that's all I'm going to do. I can only do that on a pull. Bowl gouge, you get a nice better, better cut on a, on a push cut. But with the carbide... With these AU cutters, they are a total game changer for it. Because when I come here, I'm not pull cutting. And that's why I say, with these cardboards, I'm not pull cutting. I'm push cutting. But I'm push cutting from the inside of the bolt out. Which is what you can't do with a bowl gal. So people think, no, you won't get a nice finish because you're cutting. Yeah, but if you're push cutting, I'm not, I'm not scraping it. I'm not, I'm not pulling it across. I'm actually cutting it as I'm coming out because 
because of what I've got here. Now you could sharpen a bevel like that. You could actually put a bevel like that on your bowl gouge and your traditional grind does have a, a slightly different one, but it doesn't do for everything. Again, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work properly. It don't work the same because you've got the wings. It's the wings that causes the problems. Um, but see, that's all right if, for a red ball, but it's not your favorite when you've got a, a bowl gouge. Because when you come around, see these don't have wings. So when I come round and I'm pull, when I follow around like this, as you see here, that bevel, that can follow that right the way round, and it gives me that ability. No matter where I am, I can actually cut. So, and I've only got to come round to here. So, I can pull cut, and I can come round and I can pull cut it, and get all the way round. And if I want to scrape, if I haven't got the room and I want to scrape, I can come round, but. As long as you can, if you can drop your handle a bit, I mean, if you've got, you've got trouble with your lathe bed, you ain't got that room, maybe go for a short handle version because then you can you can drop it down. I haven't got, well, I've only got it in my long handle at the moment. Um, you can drop your handle down lower. And when you come round, a bit like when I went uphill with the cut, you come along and you bring it up. You do the same here. You come along on set and then as you come here, you actually bring it up. So you'll finish your cut up here so you'll be this much above center and you can do that with these you can come up and you can be cutting up here and you can finish your cut here and then you've got your bevel and if you've got a short handle chisel you can do it and because you're presenting that way you don't need all this handle you don't need leverage because you're not getting any catching there's no pressure there's no pressure on the wood you'll find your cut will be better because you're not scraping you're cutting you're not putting the pressure on the side of it and it works that's why I've got to sing the praises for the for the car buy. There's room for both. There really is. But these do have benefits. Some really good benefits. So there. Anyway, guys. I'm hoping that's... And I hope that helps out for you, Peter. Because I know you'll be watching. And, I mean, I did say to you, be very careful if you're doing this with the small cutters. You can do it with the 6 mil. It is the same. You can... Again, bring it right. I see a lot of people, they're doing the hollowing. They've got the, the ones with the six mil cutters. And they're doing the same. They're coming They're coming this way. And they're, they're using it over and, and coming up the sides. You're scraping. You're, you're not using your bevel. You're scraping. And because you've got it here, even though you've got your bevel, it's, your cut, it's like having your cutter up. It, it's this, this action again. Yeah, I can't, I can't move that. So you really need to get on that tip and get it twisted because then it can it can go up, it can cut. So again, if you're doing your deep hollowing, go in, come across and bring your cutter up. Start to work up higher. When you're up here, what you'll find, in, even in your deep vessels, if you can bring it up a little bit and come on the side, try and get on that tip as much as you can. And that stops you grabbing. You won't get any of the grabbing. It's grabbing because it's scraping. If, if ever you're in there and you get that, you're scraping, you're not cutting. The minute you're cutting, a cut, cutting action will never give you a grab. It will never do that when it's, something's cutting. Okay? Uh, you only ever get that action when it's scraping. So the minute that does that, you know you've scraped. And, and it's... Oh, I can't say... It, it, it's, it's, it's a fact... It, it is a simple fact. There's, there, you can't can't get away from it. It's a if if I come in here, this is the standard nine mil round. If I'm like that, that that's going to be catchy. It's going to be aggressive. It, it pulls down, moves a lot of wood. It's fantastic. And if you just want to shift wood out, hold tight and just do it. That's fine. But if you're over this way, you it'll be cutting and you you won't get this grab. And it's comfier. It might take you a little bit. It might take you an extra 10 cuts or something to get that put out. But so what? What else are you doing? You know, if you want to get it out quick, well, do that and then just roll it over and get a few easy cuts. But these are the same. It, it's only when it's up here and you're on that bell that you're cutting. And anything that's cutting, see, I can move that up. But I can't can't move it out there. So it's, it's just, you can see it for yourself. I can't drag that up. But there, I can just pull it up. So if we can get a happy balance where we get there, and we're holding it, and the wood's going down, the wood's going to be cutting, and we're going to be comfortable. And you can just come around. That's why when you see if you see me hollow, I'll be inside the box because I only need a short short chisel because I can get in there and I can get in control. I can feel everything that's happening. 
So there you go. Which is why my um, GT, the SCH4 works, because the cutter's fixed at an angle, so it cuts. It, it won't scrape. It's not designed to scrape. I do one that can scrape, and, and the standard GT, if anyone's got one of those, because I sold a hell of a lot of those through time, um, put a negative rate cutter on it. My God, does that change it? It, it really, it, it makes it such a nice toy. It, that, there's no grabbing or nothing, and it still moves a lot of wood. Just put a negative rate cutter on there. That calms it down a lot. Um, and when you're over quite a bit, then take your tool rest up a little bit and just angle it down slightly. It helps. Whenever you can get that angle on your cutter, it helps it to cut and not, not scrape. Um, right, so that's it. I'm hoping that's helped. That was for mainly for the AU cutters. Like I said, I'm not going to go too mad on this because I actually want this. I'm going to make a bowl out of this. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. So I love the, my favourite things, Sportwood Beach. I'm not one for doing colouring and things. I don't... I, I love wood as wood. That's the beauty. That's why I'm a wood turner. I love wood. So that's that, guys. Um, that's about it. I don't think there's anything I want to say on this one. Uh, I've got a little box I want to be doing. A little lidded pot. I've got to do one of those because I ain't done one of them yet. Show you how I can muck up putting a lid on. Um, and that's pretty much it. I am going to be doing a deeper hollowing. I'm going to do a vase. A uh, vase of vase. Well, look at me. I'm not posh. I'm yeah, going to do a vase. vase. I'm not, I'm going to do a vase. <laughs> You're from Essex. <laughs> from South, me. South London. Get it right, girl. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing the hollower, okay? That's what I'm going to be doing for this one. Um, yeah, do a little bit with this. 8mm or 6mm car. Probably mostly the 6mm car. Just see how we go. Um, yeah, like I said, people have asked me, so I'll, I'll do it and I'll do a little demo on it. And we go from that. Right. Okay guys, thank you for joining me. This has only been a quick five minute video. I ain't had a lot of time to spare, so there you go. You know me, I'm quick in and out, that's it, get them done. Right. Quick. Thank F 41 minutes. Thank you, f who's counting? No, they don't, no, 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 the clock's changed. <laughs> they don't count now, because the clock's changed. Right, thanks for joining me guys. Next video, I'm going to get out, I'm going to be turning something and actually making something, because I'll just showing you these cuts and that, but then... I've got to answer questions for the for the carbides. So, and our carbide cut is sharp. Funny thing, yesterday, two people. <laughs> one I thought, what has he done? Sent me a, a message, he actually texted me and sent me a picture. And his fingers all bandaged up and blood everywhere. And I thought, oh Christ, what have you done? He said, I was using your carbide chisels. And I thought, oh, here we go. And he said, stupidly rushing. I took my, I hadn't cleaned, cleaned off the little knob on the bottom of the bowl. Took the bowl off, put it on the lathe bed, and he was using the chisel to uh, carbide chisel to remove it. He slipped and the whoosh, yeah. cut his finger. And the other one was uh, Peter. Yeah, he was turning away and he didn't even know. He looked and he got blood going everywhere and he's sliced, sliced right down his finger. He's got to cut that long right down it. Are cutters sharp? Yes, they are. Are my cutters sharp? Yes, very sharp. As you've seen, cut aluminium and they're still cutting wood and leaving a, a finish like beautiful finish. So you see that. So, yeah, so you can see the finish I've got. And that, that cut was cutting aluminium, okay? And now it's something for Lisa to play with. I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> Give me a bad name. I think it's for, it? like, massaging and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can massage with that, I suppose. Right, anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. And I have waffled on for the people that like me waffling. Anyone else, just prick that mute button, then I'm gone. <laughs> Or click next and you can go and watch someone else. Tenable there you go. <laughs> right, thank you for joining me, guys. Toodle Pip, and I will see you on the next one. And happy Halloween. Yay. Don't let the spooks get you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs>